My name is Mariam. My favorite hobby is art. Okay. And my favorite animal is rabbits because they don't harm. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sidra. I am five. And I like to play Lego. My favorite animal is eagle. Bye. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aisha, spelled A I C H A. I am 11 years old, and my favorite hobbies are reading, writing, and art. If I could be any animal, I would be a cat because cats are my favorite animal. My three favorite hobbies are gymnastics, soccer, and art. And if I were to be an animal, I would pick a horse because they're so cute. Salam alaikum. My name is Maryam. I'm six years old. I live in the United States and I like to eat couscous every Friday. I'm happy to be here in this camp. Salam alaikum. My name is Bridby and I'm six. Assalamu my name is Shaiden and I am 7 years old. And this is Abby and, and she, she is 2 years, years old. old. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Ria. Do you know one of my three hobbies? Making cakes. Making cakes. What else? I don't know. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sultana. My three favorite hobbies are Spend time with my family, baking cakes, and math. If I were an animal, I would be a rabbit because they are so cute. Goodbye. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sophie. My favorite hobbies are playing Minecraft, playing football, and playing with my friends. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hadia. My name is Yaya. This here is Ibrahim. What are you doing with your fire truck? Okay, so I'm 14 years old. I'm 11 years old. He's 2 uh, years and 4 months. What are you? Yes, yes, yes. What are you? My favorite hobbies right. are drawing, uh, writing poetry, and reading. Re I read all the time. I am currently reading one of Inan Papi's books, The Ethnic Cleansing he of Palestine. And my right. favorite hobbies I like to do, I like to play with my baby brother. He's right here. And I like to play Minecraft and I like to stay with my parents. Anyways, I saw the Kong Say bye. Say bye. 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 Assalamu alaikum, little kids. My name is Omer, and I am 12 years old. My favorite hobbies are playing video games, being active, and playing sports. If I, if I were any animal in the whole world, it would be a falcon because they are the fastest animals in the world. Assalamu alaikum, little kids. Assalamu alaikum, and my name is Ibrahim, and I'm seven years old, and uh, my favorite. Hey, my favorite hobby is math, gym, and soccer. My favorite animal is a rabbit. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Iman. I am 13 years old. Three of my favorite hobbies include reading. I love reading, baking, and I also love coding. Um, and also, and last question, if you were any animal in the whole world, which one would you be? I think I would be a cat because I just, I just love cats. Like they're my favorite animal. And plus they, all they do is basically just lie around all day. And I would love to do that all day. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shaira. My name is Muhammad. And I'm 12 years old. And I'm seven years old. And we're from Malaysia. Malaysia. My three favorite hobbies are drawing, skating, and singing. My three favorite hobbies are drawing, painting, and also playing football. And if I was an animal, I would be a megalodon. And if I was an animal, I would be an elephant. Bye! Salam alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Dre. My age is seven. And my three favorite hobbies is running, reading, and writing. And if I could be any animal, I would be a monkey so I could eat bananas and any banana products. 
My name is Mustafa and I am eight years old. My three favorite hobbies are one, riding my scooty, two, doing arts, and three, playing with my little sister. And if I could be any animal in the world, I would be a tiger because they are so cool, they are strong, and my favorite animal is a tiger. Assalamu alaikum no kids. My name is Noor and I am 10 years old and I am from Pakistan and my three favorite hobby is I'm doing coding. Coding is something that you can make something like an app or a dance party like this one. And that was my dance party. My next hobby is taking good care of pets and animals. I I have given food to my parrot. See? Mm -hmm. See? And then I some water mm -hmm. and some food. And I have given food to my fish. And my last hobby is storytelling. And if I wanted to be an animal, I would be a cat because cats are very clean and they are very friendly. I love his North kids. My name is Ramesh Abdelatif. I'm nine years old. My favorite things to do are, is reading, I love sports, and I like watching movies. And if I could be any animal in the world, I would be a cheetah. Assalamu alaikum, North kids. My name is Leon. You pronounce it Leon. And I'm nine years old. And if I were to be any animal in the world, I would pick a fish because fish can swim in water and they can breathe underwater. Assalamu alaikum, Dora kids. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Salah, and my three favorite hobbies is cooking breakfast and gaming and aviation and if i would be an animal i would be a bird so i could fly above it all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my name is aisha and we pronounce my name aisha and my favorite animal that i would like to be is um owls assalamu alaikum my name is Hilal. almost turning nine my three favorite hobbies is playing basketball playing soccer and having uh, and um, learning. My name is Ibrahim. Uh, my favorite hobbies are um, reading, building Legos and uh, and uh, playing video games. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hania. I am nine years old. My three favorite hobbies are number one, painting, number two, writing poetry, and number three, playing basketball. If I would be any animal in the world, I would choose none because I think it's better to be a human than to be an animal. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sophia and I'm 10 years old. My three favorite hobbies are baking, art, and writing. If I were to be any animal in the whole wide world, I would be a cat because they get to eat mice and they get nice cuddles and massages. Assalamu alaikum, North kids. My name is Ida and I'm eight years old. I'm, if I could be any animal in the world, I would be a cat. I have my own cat. His name is Goofy and he is two months old. He loves to play and loves to snuggle. I love his North kids. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shafia. I'm six years old. I, I love playing with my friends, I love drawing, I love painting. If I, if I was any animal in the world, I'll be a cat because they're so cute. I am Zahra. I am seven years old. My, my favorite hobbies are drawing, bird watching, and reading. If I was an animal, I will be a zebra. My name is Abdul Latif, and my favorite hobby is to dance, watch movies, and do some sports. <clears throat> Wow.
What is the secret to building patience? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to be reading out of this book called The Perfect Planner. After that, we are going to be speaking with Sheikh Omar Suleiman and playing a game called The Patient Puzzler. And then we're going to be giving away millions and millions. If you're ready, let's begin. is this happening to me? I am seven years old and more than anything, I want to be a winner. You see, when I'm seven, my older brother Muhammad and Shireen, they have awards coming out of their ears. A trophy for Scrabble, a trophy for soccer, a trophy for mock trial. But me? Nada. Nothing. More than anything, I just want to be a winner. And I finally get my chance. At my masjid, they were doing a Qur'an memorization competition. The way it works was simple. They gave each of us a different surah to memorize based off of our age. And if we could memorize it without making any mistakes, we'd get a trophy. When I was seven years old, they asked us to do Surat Jumu'ah, and I put my heart and soul into it. Every single night, every single morning, I would put on my cassette player and I would practice. And I had it down perfectly. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ I remember the night before the competition. I go to my mom and I say, Mommy, tomorrow your son is going to be a winner. And she said, Insha'Allah. When I finally got to my Sunday school on the day of the competition, I was a little bit nervous. I remember getting out of my mom's minivan and walking up to the masjid and I turned the doorknob and I pushed the door open and I saw all the other boys and girls. They were buzzing like bees as they were practicing and I started getting a little bit nervous. My hands started to feel sweaty. My throat started to feel dry. Sweat starts dripping down my cheek and the teacher calls on me. Amin, it is your time to do the Quran memorization competition. I was nervous, but I walked into her office. I sat down. She said, Amin, we don't have all day. Come on, come on, come on. I said, okay, okay, okay. And I started. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. You sub no. Ida sama no. Ara eta ledi no 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 no. I forgot the whole thing. I remember I cried my eyes out and. I ran outside of the class and I went to go find my mom and I hugged her. And I remember I asked her, I said, Mom, why is this happening to me? Now here's the thing, boys and girls. More likely than not, there's been a time in your life when something has happened and you've asked a similar question. Maybe a mom or a dad lost their job. Maybe a grandma or grandpa got sick. Maybe things didn't work out the way you wanted to and you wondered, why is this happening to me? Now on that day, my mom gave me some special advice. She said, Amin, be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best planner. 
Now on that day, I didn't understand what my mom meant, but I took her advice and I was patient, believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best planner. And you know what? She was right. While I didn't win that Qur'an memorization competition on that day when I was seven years old, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me something so much better, something that I could have never in my wildest imagination dreamed. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the opportunity to share this story with you and thousands of other kids across the world today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I even see Yahya from California, Jenna from Sri Lanka, Rahim from Coon Rapids, Adnan from Ethiopia, Alicia from Australia, Iman from Toronto, Maz from Miami, holding up his latest Noor Kids book. I see Khadija, Yaqub, and Muhammad, but they're not smiling. Khadija, there, come on, show us. There is the smile. I see uh, Hafsa and Kubra from North Carolina, Mayameen from Pennsylvania. Oh, so beautiful smiles. I cannot handle it. All right, but we're not here to just say salams. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Brother Amin Asr, and I am the leader here in the Muslim Treehouse, where every single week throughout the entire year, yes, the whole year, not just Ramadan, we do live classes for kids across the world. Now, today we have a question. Not a small question, not a medium question. Nope, it is a big question. Question. Mm -hmm. How do we build patience in order for us to understand this question? Oh, actually, before we do that, we've got a giveaway. We've actually got a giveaway. Yesterday, I announced that we would be giving away three, count them, one, two, three, Muslims inventing our world puzzle. And these are the three comments that we picked. I'm going to actually read one of them because it made my heart happy. It says, Assalamu alaikum, my Lee and Zahra's mom here. We are Cuban and Chinese. We originally are from Miami, but we live in Lake Mary, Florida now. I actually discovered Noor Kids after converting to Islam three years ago. I wasn't sure how to introduce Islam to the girls and tell them there are certain things we cannot do now that we are Muslim. I was working at home and in my anxiety, I made dua to Allah unknowingly. I said, man. I wish there was an easy way to make my kids love Islam, and wallahi, just a few seconds later, Noor Kids Ramadan popped up on my YouTube. I was so shocked that I looked up and I said, wow, thanks Allah, LOL, lol. That means laughing out loud. That was quick. And three years later, we're still huge fans of Noor Kids. Thanks for everything you guys have done for our family and continue to do. Allahu Akbar. That made my heart happy. Well, the three of you guys message us on Instagram so that way you can claim your prizes. And today we are going to be giving away Jake. No. Seriously? Allah, this is this is too much. I don't think I don't think we Well, let's see, okay? Anyways, let's head on over to the library and get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, life is not meant to be easy. We've talked about it before. A part of life means that we get tested. But how do we develop patience? That is a great question. In order for us to understand the answer to this question, we are going to be reading a very special book. Oh, okay. All right. We're going to be reading a very special book called The Perfect Planner. And yes, I am all queued up. Um, but before we start, I need everyone to say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. On the count of three. One, two, three. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. A special plan. I love this book. You guys are going to love it so much. Jake, can you get my ear? Um, all right. Shireen is traveling to the Amazon rainforest with her mom. I'm so excited to see this one, says Shireen as she points to the jaguar in her magazine. Sweet Pea, don't get your hopes up. Jaguars are really tough to spot. Now, by the way, Shireen's mom, she works for National Geographic, so she gets to travel all around the world. It's kind of cool. Shireen daydreams. If I can get one good photo, I can win the Junior Ranger photography competition, thinks Shireen. Look at her. She's imagining herself next to this photo of a jaguar. And if I win the competition, I can get onto the cover of Junior Explorer magazine. And if I can do that, then I can become a professional photographer. Just like you, Mom, says Shireen. Shreen has a really big and an amazing plan. Allahu Akbar. Mom giggles as she hugs her daughter. They planned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. She quoted a verse from the Quran. Oh, Insha'Allah, sweet pea. But for now, let's just get some rest. Shireen and Mom dive into the, drive into the rainforest. You're my hero, you know that, says Shireen. Is it because I make the best mac and cheese in all of Maple Grove, says Mom? No, Mom. You get to go places like this and take photos of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creations, says Shireen. A loud noise scares him. Shireen. Boom! What was that, says Shireen. Mom stops the car. Mm. The tire is flat. I'll have to repair it. Oh man, I hope it doesn't take too long. We need as much time as we can to get, to get, uh, we need as much time as we can get to spot that Jaguar, says Shireen. I know, I can record our adventure in my journal, thinks Shireen. While mom fixes the tires, Shireen writes in her journal. In no time, the two are back on the road, Shireen says to her mom. Mom, did you know that there are more than three million different animals here? Wow, that's a lot, says mom. I can't wait to see them, thinks Samira. She's specifically thinking about the jaguar. That would be exciting, but remember, they are rare and they are very excellent, very good at hiding. At the campsite, they set up their tent. We still have six hours before sunset, thinks, says Shireen. Yep, we can look for some jaguars once we finish, says Mom. They finish in record time. That means they finish really quickly. But... Shireen feels something on her hand. What's that? Says Shireen as she feels it. Mmm. Looks like a drop of water. Uh-oh. It looks like rain. We'd better stay in, sweet pea. Rain in the Amazon is serious. Shireen is sad. She feels like nothing is going her way. I guess I can write some more in my journal, says Shireen. Okay, here's the thing, you guys. I know that most of you have probably never gone to the Amazon rainforest. Honestly speaking, I've never gone to the Amazon rainforest either. I have ordered stuff from Amazon, though. But anyways, that's different. I have, though, felt like Shireen does. And you probably have, too where you make a plan. We're first gonna do this, then we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do this, and it doesn't work out the way you want it. They've gone through a bunch of difficulties. Their car had a flat tire, so they're running late. Then it started raining, so she has even less time. Those challenges are normal, and they're gonna happen to us where things don't work out the way that we want them to.
But the question is, how do we respond? What do we do when things don't work out the way we want? Let's read on and find out. The next morning, the weather is perfect. I've packed our things. Let's get going, says Mom. In the jungle of the Amazon, Shireen spots a number of beautiful animals. <gasps> Look, a toucan. Oh, oh. What, is there a toucan here? What was that? Oh. Sorry, okay. <laughs> and then a dart frog. Rivet. No, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do this, okay? Wow, a spider monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. I'm sorry, okay, that was too much. You want it? You want more? You want more? No, I'm not gonna give you. Ooh, ooh, ah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, let's go back. All right. Look, a toucan and a dart frog. Wow, a spider monkey. <gasps> do you think we'll see a jaguar? says Shireen. I think I see one, says Mom. Look, Allahu Akbar, there's a jaguar it's sitting on the tree. Allahu Akbar, let me grab my camera, says Shireen. Be sure that your hands are steady, says Mom. Shireen carefully snaps a picture of the beautiful cat. Click. We did it, Mom. I can't believe it. I'm surprised, too. I didn't think we'd spot one, says Mom. Oh, my goodness. They're so happy. As the two walk back to the tent, Shireen overflows with excitement. This photo is my ticket to everything that I dreamed. Can you give me the camera? I'd like to see the photo, says Mom. Uh-oh. Shireen, did you see this? Says Mom. What do you mean? The photo is blurry. Oh, no. Oh, my. Jake, the photo's blurry. Oh, my. <laughs> Who wrote this book? Why would they do that? I don't know why the author would write that. Oh, I wrote, I'm the author. Oh, sorry. I actually wrote this book. I'm sorry, I knew it was coming. Okay, let's, everyone just settle down, okay? Let's gather ourselves. Oh, take a deep breath. The photo is blurry. Shireen is horrified. I can't believe this is happening, Mom. All you can see is a blurry blob on the tree. Allah. This poor girl. She thought it was going to work out perfectly. Don't lose heart, sweet pea. Let me tell you a story about these trees. Now, you guys, this is incredible. I want you to all pay attention. I think about this story all the time, and this is one that I want you to really pay attention to. The trees in this rainforest, in the Amazon rainforest, are home for all of the animals. Over three million animals, right? We talked about that. And they are a miracle. How, says Shireen. Mom says, well, the plants and the trees don't get their nutrients from the soil like most because the rainforest soil is actually very poor. You see, in the Amazon rainforest, there's actually so much rain that comes down that the rain washes away all of the nutrients from the soil. Now, a tree needs nutrients to survive, Shireen asks. So how do they survive if they don't get nutrients from the soil? Well, says Mom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a special plan. Millions of years ago in Africa, okay, Africa is a continent right over here. So the rainforest is in South America, Africa is all over here, okay. Millions of years ago in Africa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created an enormous lake, okay. Then there was this huge lake here called Lake Chad. That lake evaporated and turned into the Sahara Desert. So now in northern Africa, there's no lake. It's a desert. Every day, dust from that desert that used to be a lake, it flies into the air and it travels 
thousands of miles over the Atlantic Ocean, and that dust lands on top of the trees in the rainforest. And that gives the trees here the nutrients to survive. I want to explain that one more time just so you understand, because this is really cool. All of you have heard of the rainforest, where there's over three million animals that live. Toucans, dart frogs, leopards, snow monkeys, you get the point. But the truth is, the Amazon rainforest is a miracle. Every tree needs nutrients to survive, but in the Amazon rainforest, there's so much water that the nutrients can't stay there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a plan millions of years ago. Thousands of miles away in another place called Africa, there used to be a lake. That lake evaporated, turned into a desert. And now every day, dust flies up in the air in Africa. It flies thousands of miles over the Atlantic Ocean, and it lands onto the leaves of the Amazon rainforest. And that's where it gets its nutrients to survive. If you are saying, Allahu Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best planner, you are right. No one, no one could have ever created such an amazing plan. All right, let's read on. Okay, uh, funny thing. All right. All right, let's read on. Allahu Akbar, says Shireen. Mom holds Shireen close to her. In the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for the rainforest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has a plan for you. It might not to be to photograph a jaguar, but Shireen replies, maybe to write about it. I like the way you're thinking. You should write that down. Now here's the thing. I love this story so much because it teaches us a really important lesson. I plan, you plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best planner. Sometimes when difficult things happen, mom or dad lose their job, grandma or grandpa get sick, we are all seeing what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. What we have to remember, and one of the things that helps us build patience, is remembering our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. And even if we may not be able to understand now, we have full faith that our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for what's ahead. Now, in order for me to better understand this concept of patience, we have a special guest speaker joining us today, a man who needs no introduction. But before we do, um, I'm going to mosey on over to the laboratory, and we are going to play a quick video from our sponsor for the program tonight uh, called Durio Plus. Bismillah! May Allah bless our Ramadan. All right, so like I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we are being joined by a special guest, a man who needs no introduction. His videos are watched by millions and millions of people from across the world. He is the executive director of Yakin Institute, where their goal is to help people like you and me, our moms, our dads, our uncles, our aunties, and kids build conviction and clarity in their faith. Now, um, I like to think of him as America's Imam because whenever we go through difficulties as a community, Sheikh Umar is one of the people who speaks loud and proud as a Muslim 
and helps us better understand what we are going through. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Sheikh Umar Suleiman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Sheikh Umar. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing... Actually, we normally say good, but on our program we say supercalifragilisticexpialidociously awesome. I'm not going to ask you to do it, but do you want to try? You know, if you would have asked like three hours ago when my brain still hadn't, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a little tough. I'll, I'll just say alhamdulillah. Does that work? <laughs> alhamdulillah, that work. It's a good answer. Now, Sheikh, every time I see you, whether you're on our program or we see you on YouTube or somewhere else, you're always smiling. Seriously. You're not smiling mm -hmm. now, though. But normally you're <laughs> smiling. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I had to, I had to break the stereotype, you know. <laughs> how do you how do you always stay so positive? Well, alhamdulillah. I mean, look, I think that one of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu has described is as always smiling, basam al hakim, right? Always smiling and laughing and causing other people the same. And the Prophet Sallallahu went through a lot of personal difficulty and the community went through a lot of difficulty in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu but he always smiled. And that is a form of worship. And so smiling is an act of worship. It's an act of worship in showing contentment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gratitude to Allah for every situation that you're in. It's an act of worship to your brother and your sister as well, because when you smile at them, it's charity. And one of the ways that it's charity is that you can make them feel better that day. So if they're having a bad day and you smile at them, then you might cause them to smile as well. And that could reduce the burden that they have. SubhanAllah, what I'll tell you is not only is it perhaps like you mentioned an act of worship, it's something that has like a magnetic impact because when you smile, then I feel like smiling. And I think everyone else around us feels like smiling too and it lightens our load. Now, Sheikh, we did something pretty special this year, okay? We have um, a community on, uh, we created this like community where there are now, alhamdulillah, over 2,000 kids we're part of. And we asked them to write what questions they have for Sheikh Umar Suleiman because we knew that you were joining. And we had over 180 responses. Jake, can we share my screen? Yeah, sure. um, so we had kids from all across the world uh, who asked questions, okay? Oh, wow. Now, um, we have 180 of these questions. And subhanAllah, you know, uh, Sheikh, wait, how much time do you have, by the way? Uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're Let's not going to go through all the questions. He, his, his smile went away pretty quick. He's like, wait, hold on, 180? No, 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 no. Um, we picked a few of them uh, to share with you, okay. and then we've got a game, okay? So uh, the first question uh, is from a young uh, woman. Um, Jake, do you want to ask that question? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Omar Suleiman and Nortons. So, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask Sheikh Omar Suleiman, how long did it take to become a Sheikh? And how did, like, how did you, like, kind of like know that you wanted to be a sheikh and did you like get picked to be a sheikh or something or did you just decide you wanted to be a sheikh all right so that's the first question okay so um you know in islam you learn your entire life and so when you're a child you're learning you're learning from your parents you're learning from your islamic school you're learning from your masjid and then obviously you can choose to go and study Islam overseas or study Islam in a seminary or a university and develop your learning of Islam. And all of that is to say that it's supposed to be a lifelong pursuit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you can never learn enough. And so you start memorizing the Quran until you memorize the Quran. You read about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you never get enough of reading about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You listen to lectures, you find teachers, the point is, is that it's not just, you know, that you become a sheikh, it's that you spend your whole life learning. And the Prophet ﷺ said, The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an 
and then teach it. And so learning beneficial knowledge and then teaching it is one of the best ways to live your life that the Prophet Sallallahu said. So I always, you know, as soon as I started learning, had the intention to benefit with that knowledge. Now, benefit can come in many ways. Teaching is just one of those ways. So uh, for me, the turning points are many in my life. It's not one single turning point. Um, but I would advise every single person to take advantage of all the different opportunities you have to learn about this beautiful religion. Because whether you benefit people by teaching it or by acting upon this beautiful religion, then inshallah ta'ala, you can be a guiding light for many, many people for years to come. You know, Sheikh, one of the things that we just talked about earlier was smiling. And one of the cool things about smiling is when you smile, it makes other people smile. And that's something I think everyone can understand, right? Like when we smile, then you feel like smiling. Well, in the same way, when we practice our faith, when we are generous, when we are humble, when we forgive, when we are gracious, when we practice our faith, even if we are not on YouTube and speaking at the front of our masjid, in fact, we're actually helping people. And one of the things I also really liked about what you said, Sheikh, is, um, you know, you don't have to be a Sheikh to be a learner of faith. That's something that every single one of us can do our whole life, even if we don't decide to someday be a scholar of Islam. Um, was it easy? Uh, no, it's not easy. It never was easy. But like you said, it's it's never something that you stop doing. And so I enjoy learning so that I can teach as well. So everything that I do, every series that I do, every lecture that I give, every khutbah that I give, um, I spend a lot of time preparing for it. And I enjoy the end result and i even enjoy the process i enjoy enriching myself with that knowledge you know the more that you read the more that you love allah and the more that you love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the more that you love his family his companions may allah be pleased with them all the more that you love the legends of the past the more that you see the possibilities of what you can be in the present and in the future inshallah so the more that you read the more joy that you actually find and so, yes, it's hard in terms of the hours that you give and in terms of the sacrifices that you have to make because you can't do many other things because you have to study all the time. But at the same time, it's so much more enriching when you're studying than doing anything else. I pinch myself and I pinch my team sometimes. No, I don't pinch my team. But subhanAllah, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day that this is what, for example, even with newer kids, that's what we do. Um, and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us that opportunity. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to make it easy for you, to bless you, and to um, you know, make, it, uh, make the path easy, because I imagine it's quite difficult. Regardless, Sheikh, we've got a second question. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Umar Sulaiman. My name is Yusuf. I live in Dallas, Texas. What do you do in your free time? Assalamu alaikum. So I like to play sports. So I like to exercise at least twice a week and uh, play sports. I play basketball a lot. And I also play football. So um, I play flag football um, sometimes on the weekends, even Ramadan. I do like late night flag football on the weekends. Uh, so I enjoy a lot of sports. I, uh, you know... Speaking of sports, one of the things that, you know, I don't want to tell the audience here because I don't want them to maybe look at you in a different way, but I think it's important that they know, um, Sheikh, that you are a fan of the New Orleans Saints. Now, you guys, please don't, don't rush to judgment. I know you're probably thinking, why would anyone cheer for the New Orleans Saints? Like, they were the people who did Bounty Gate. I know... You guys are all probably thinking, it's okay, Sheikh. You can be you here. You know, don't worry about it. It's fine. But uh, subhanAllah, do you watch sports? I believe, I believe you're, you're a Vikings fan, right? Minnesota Vikings fan. So, yeah, so we, we beat you guys to win the championship uh, in 2009. It was glorious, mashallah. <laughs> and then we won the Super Bowl. It was great. I actually have the, the, the ribbon and some of the stuff from, 
you know, when we beat the Vikings in 2009. It was really nice. My daughter was born, by the way. Cool, cool story, by the way. I mean, my daughter was born the night we beat the Cardinals in the, yeah. uh, in the playoffs that year. And then so she was, you know, a week old when we beat the Vikings. And then, you know, three weeks old when we beat the Colts in the Super Bowl that year. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's it sounds like such a really wonderful memory, and I'm so happy that you're able to cherish it, Sheikh Omar, because the likelihood of it happening again is slim to none. So, alhamdulillah, at least you have that. Uh, <laughs> no, but okay, so Sheikh, I'll be honest, the Vikings have never won a Super Bowl. We still pray, um, and it's not getting any easier. But Sheikh, is it important to stay balanced in our life? And also, by the way, Sheikh, when, when you say that you play twice a week, I'm thinking to myself, man, I see Sheikh Umar in Washington, D.C. one day, and then I see him in Qatar on another day, and then I see him in California another day, and I'm thinking, how does Sheikh have time? Why is recreation so important and having a balanced life? So you need time to obviously balance out, especially with the stress that's out there and all the things that we have to do. You need time for leisure, right? But what that leisure is, is also important. So if your leisure is something that actually is bad for your soul, then it's not good leisure. But if your leisure is something that is good for your body and doesn't have anything haram in it and also relieves the soul, right? There's a social element to it as well. There's a bonding element as well, right? So when you're exercising, when you're playing sports, you get to be with people, with with brothers, um, and you know, and enjoy that atmosphere as well, right? So, it's important that a person takes breaks, but that their breaks are not breaks from their dean, right? So, what you're doing on your free time is also very important. If what you're doing on your free time undermines what your religion is, then it's going to actually hurt your body and hurt your soul, right? It's not going to be good for your brain. It's not going to be good for your heart. Uh, I find time, I mean, obviously, the, the twice a week is ideal. I do travel a lot. So when I travel, I don't get to play basketball and stuff like that. Um, but I try to make use of early mornings and I try to make use of late nights, you know, so before and after uh, my workload in order to to do some of those things uh, at times. I love I love what you said. I think that was so valuable. And um, frankly, like our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was strong. Right, And when we think about some of his hobbies, right, things like riding horses or archery or swimming or wrestling, all of those things involved physical fitness. And actually, this week that's coming up, we're focusing on the Qur'an. The next week, we're actually going to be talking about our bodies and having strong bodies. Sheikh, we've got another question for you. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Omar. Uh, Mr. Amin here. Unique question. I was fasting a couple days ago, and I tripped. Okay, I accidentally tripped, and when I tripped, I ate accidentally uh, half of a Philly cheesesteak sandwich and half of a water bottle. Now, is my fast still valid? What do you think? Thank you, Sheikh. <laughs> well, I don't know how that question got in there, Sheikh. I don't know. I think Amin's parents need to discipline him because I think that his excuses really don't hold up. They sound like the same excuses the Vikings make when they don't win the Super Bowl every year. You know, they're really, really lame excuses. So I think Amin needs some help. We I think I, I'd like to talk to Amin's parents. Um, I know Mashallah he has gray hair and you know, he seems like he's an older kid. But I'd like to talk to his parents about why he's eating a Philly cheesesteak in Ramadan. And maybe he's running around and, and tripping in the kitchen too much. You know, maybe he needs to stop that. He's, you know, Mr. Amin, it's just, he's... He's got a mind of his own. I don't even know. All right, so Sheikh, we do have more questions for you, but Assalamu alaikum, oh. Sheikh Umar Salaman. Oh, we'll just I do the question. I have a question for you. Why did Allah Subhanahu wa Taala create animals like alligators, tigers, and lions, which harm us? Allah peace. Mashallah. So first of all, I have to admit, lions are my favorite animal. I love lions. I look at them and like you know, and I, I look at like just how. Uh, powerful they are and how noble they are. They seem like really cool animals. So I'm a big fan of lions. Um, I'm also from Louisiana. So we had a lot of alligators, uh, you know, LSU tigers and Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We had a lot of alligators. So 
uh, I really do understand uh, that, that that type of a question. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created every single thing for a purpose. Some animals, uh, you know, help protect other animals from other predators. Some animals find food and sustenance in other animals. Every insect even, you know, contributes to the environment in some way, contributes to the oxygen production in the environment. And so one of the things that we find the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in is learning about why every single animal exists and what purpose and function they actually play in the environment, in the ecosystem. And that's the perfection of Allah's creation. SubhanAllah. And, you know, even, for example, a mosquito, right? Um, there's traditions about a mosquito. What's a mosquito for? Well, it's to make a king kind of humble. Um, and, yeah, when we think about the ecosystem, well, without the alligator, maybe there'd be an overpopulation of something. Like, everything works together in a really perfect system. Sheikh, we have a, um, we have got a game to play with you. It's called the Patience Puzzler, okay? Now, you are going to need to have a piece of paper and a pen, okay? Okay. Um, now, um, the way it works is simple. Um, Jake, our producer, is going to be uh, playing audio clips. All right, now these audio clips are of facts related to animals. Is that right? They're facts related to food or animals? They're related to animals. Okay, they're facts related to animals. Now, okay. um, the idea is there's going to be a couple of rounds here, and it's a kind of test of patience because these are going to be a little bit slow, and our goal okay. is going to be to see if we can make it out. Now, this is, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion today about the Vikings and the Saints, okay? So we decided, look, we could potentially try to settle the score here um, to see, We're look. Already you know, settled. We, we beat you guys in the championship, but okay. <laughs> I, but ahead. that was, you know, like 2000 and what, I don't even remember. It's, you know, prehistoric. I don't know if people even remember. Um, pre pre people probably don't. I don't think they, they're, I'm looking at them. They say they don't remember. They're shaking their heads. Anyways, uh, point is, all right? We're gonna play these audio clips. Uh, and uh, the goal is to see if we can make out what the audio is. It is a fact about a animal. All right, round one, let's go. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. You want to play it one more time? Sure. So yeah, let me hear that again. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. Okay. All right, Shake, you get it? So what do I have to do is name the animal that was mentioned? Is that what it is? What, what am I doing? I think doing you have here? to actually say the fact. Like, what was the fact that was shared? Um, flamingos are flamboyant. So what I got is a group of flamingos is called a flamboyant. What is the answer? Uh, I got it. All right. So I, I, I'm the answer. I got that one. I'm sorry, Shake. Look. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to win this game, but that's okay. You, you seem like you got a few games on there. It's all right. You know what? Some of them, I'll Sheikh, be charitable. Sheikh, I'll let Sheikh, you Sheikh, look, I want you to know, I know that I believe in you. I think you can do this. I really right. think you can do this, all right? To, you know, okay. keep your head up, inshallah. Like, look, I know it's going to be, let's just see. All right, round two, let's go. Some frogs can freeze solid during winter and fall back to life in spring. Can you play that one more time? Yep. Some frogs can freeze solid during winter and fall back to life in spring. Some frogs can freeze over in the winter and fall back to life in the, in the spring, come back to life. Is that right? That's what it is? All right, Shake got that one. I didn't get that one. All right. <laughs> All right, so 1-1 one, one, going into the third round. Okay, these animal facts. Look, this is a twofer, right? So number one, we're able to learn about animal facts. Number two, we're able to see if we can listen to things slowly. Let's do round number three. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. I, I think I got that one. Shake, did you get that one? I need one more. Sorry. 
Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. I had that too. I I didn't say it. No, I'm serious. Who too though? Just tie it, just tie it up. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, go to go to ask ask whoever's running the counter. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. I think that's fair. I think we should we should both get that one. Okay. We're going on to four. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play it once, and you each have to give an answer. How about that? Okay, so okay. we're just going to play it once. All right, here we go. Ready? Here's four. A group of ferrets is called a business. All right, write them down. I got it. All right, Brother Neen, we'll try you first. A group of ferrets is called a business. Shake I know it too, though, so I... Did you get it too? I did. Okay, so it's 3-3. Three, three. All right, 3-3. Three, three. This is actually not that hard. Is it get tougher? Um, uh, we're gonna find out. All right, let's find we, out. We need to get a little tougher. All right. The tongue of a blue whale can weigh as much as an elephant, and its heart can be as large as a car. The tongue of a blue whale can be as large as an elephant, and its heart can be as big as a car big as a car oh. okay R Missed right all right so i think we both got that one it's tied up you guys this is i think i think at this point at this point sheikh because it's tied up i think the only way that we can actually settle this we'll do one more round but if it's tied then i think we just have to do rock paper scissors I think I that's agree. probably going to be what it, I, it's going to be. I'm a rock, paper, scissors pro. I, I'll, I'm, really? I'm wow. Okay. I, I mean, I've won a game or two in my day, so let's see. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of words in this last one. Okay, a lot of words in this one. Okay, everybody ready? Everybody ready? Goats have rectangular pupils, which give them a wider field of vision and better depth perception. Goats have rectangular pupils, which give them a wider depth of vision. Wide, Field of wide vision. vision. And depth of perception. Well, you know, I can give that to Amin. Amin got the field. But hold on. Did he say, did he say uh, Colts? Is it Colts? Was I it said Colts? Goats. No, goats. Oh, I said goats. see, I thought it was Colts. Okay, so, so then that should be my point. Five. So that's, so, well, no, but I got half of it, though. I got half of it. I think it's tied up. I think we go to rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, I think we go to rock, paper, scissors and just call it a day. I think at this point, okay? So, Sheikh, we, it, it, the, 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 the rules we play by are okay. rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay? okay? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot, and it's best of three. All right, bismillah. Let's go. Okay, all right. Rock. Yep, okay. Okay, hold on. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, we both okay. got scissors. Okay, again. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, my goodness. All right, so that's, hey, that's one. That's one. That's okay. one. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's like a weird delay here. But anyways, okay, we're going to do it again, okay, on the count of three. There's one, a delay two. on my side, right? Is that what's happening? I I don't know. I don't know. There's, it's just, I don't know what it is, but it's okay. All right. It's okay. All right. We'll do one more. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No, no. Oh my goodness. For shame. For shame. Okay. All right. Back to the questions. We've got some more questions. Real questions from real kids, Sheikh. Real questions from real kids. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh Omar Suleiman. My name is Radha, and I am from Southern California. How are you doing? I have two related questions about the people in Palestine. They are going through such a hard time right now. Is what is the best dua we can make for them in this special month? I feel that the people of Palestine will go to Jannah, inshallah. So the second question I have for you is, 
Is there a special reward for the people of Palestine? No. Assalamu alaikum, no. Sheikh Omar Suleiman. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you. What wonderful questions. So the first thing is the best dua you can make for the people of Palestine is a dua from your heart. And you can ask Allah to give them victory. You can ask Allah to make things easy for them. And the best thing that I would say is that as you are recognizing a blessing that you have, so especially in Ramadan, every night when you break your fast, ask Allah to feed them as well. Ask Allah to provide for them food and drink. When you thank Allah for your safety, ask Allah to provide them safety as well. So as you feel a blessing in your own life, then ask Allah to provide that blessing to them as well. As for them going to paradise, um, inshallah ta'ala, every single one of them that has passed away, we hope is a shaheed, is a martyr, and goes straight to paradise, inshallah. And the Prophet sallallahu talked about the blessed people around Masjid al-Aqsa, around Jerusalem, and where modern day Gaza is. And he praised them and he said that they are a people that always will remain on the truth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from them and allow us to be by their side. Shaykh, you have um, helped and had conversations with people who've gone through serious difficulty, right? I think about Christchurch in New Zealand a couple of years ago. I think about refugees who've come and specifically also related to um, the incredible challenges that our brothers and sisters in Gaza are, are going through. What have you learned about patience and this idea of trusting in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What I've learned more than anything else from the people of Palestine and people of Gaza in specific in these days is that no one else has any excuse to ever complain to Allah about their situation. That's been the main thing. How can we complain? They have suffered in every single way that you can possibly suffer. I was just speaking to a doctor. I was actually bidding farewell to him. Uh, he's leaving back for Gaza tonight. Um, so he's already been there once on a volunteer mission to work in the hospitals there. And he's going again tonight. And he was just telling me, you know, the people there, subhanAllah, like, you know, he's working the emergency room. And he's saying, you know, like, there are people that get pulled from under the rubble after four or five days still alive somehow, and they're just doing the kid. They're just remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, people that are barely rec recognizable, their faces have been blown off, and they're still thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah. So how can we complain about anything in life when we see a people that have nothing? Everything's been taken away from them. Food, drink, home, safety, security, family, and they still praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it really made me think about the Prophet ﷺ when he mentioned the special gate in Jannah for Al-Hammadu and those who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Ameen, inshallah. Ameen, inshallah. Shaykh, I know that you have places to go and people to see. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I do want to just share something with you and um, uh, ask for your help. So I mentioned to you that we have had, subhanAllah, over 180 kids who have questions and they're like, man, I have these questions for Sheikh Omar and they were super excited to meet you. Now, of course, we're not able to answer all those questions, but, but, is there anything that our kids can do to help Yakin Institute or you and your work and mm -hmm. to inshallah in some way get you back for another program maybe after Eid or something like that is there something we can do to inshallah first support you and hopefully get you back on our program again inshallah the best way you can support me is to make dua for me make dua for the people at Yaqeen there are a lot of people that work at Yaqeen so make dua for them make dua that Allah accepts all of our efforts also, make sure that you share Yaqeen's content with other people. Tell your parents as well. You watch it, you benefit. Tell other people to watch it as well, inshallah, so and benefit from it as well. And uh, as for getting me back, inshallah, I'll come back for round two. Give you another chance at rock, paper, scissors, inshallah. 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 So here's what I'm doing. Here's what uh, Jake's idea. 
I want to share this with you. We are going to put up a post today on YouTube if we can get a thousand comments by tomorrow where people say, yes, we'd like Sheikh Omar back, then inshallah, we'll make it official and we'll try to do something, probably not before Ramadan's finished, but at another point in time, inshallah. Inshallah. Should we do uh, Sheikh Umar personal official? Or I'll do that and I'll also do Yakin because it'll be a great way for people to discover your work and also Yakin if they're not already following. That works, inshallah. Perfect. Sheikh Umar, Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease your load this month of Ramadan and truthfully for me and I think for so many other people all across the world you are truly a role model and sometimes mm -hmm. honest to goodness I sometimes think to myself I'm like Allah, Allahu Akbar may Allah protect you and um, not just now but into the future to allow you to stay sincere in all of your intentions and truly protect you um, um, because I imagine um, the role that you're playing for all of us today is a very important one. And however we can be here to support, we will absolutely do that, Sheikh Omar. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khair, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Jazakumullah khair, I mean, for having me and everyone at Noor Kids. Assalamu alaikum. It's good to see you all. Assalamu alaikum. All right, you guys. Whoa, that was so cool. Oh my goodness. Did you guys see that video I, uh, of Mr. Amin? That was too much. I think that was probably too much. He fell at that. was funny. Anyways, all right, you guys. I have a couple of cool things to announce. All right, thing number one is I, I'm, I'm actually posting this right now on YouTube and I literally need all of you guys to comment on it. Um so that, inshallah, we can get Sheikh Umar to join us again um, and um, including his channels there so that way you can follow him. All right, so do that so that way, inshallah, we can get him again. But number two, I need to tell you about our sponsor today. You guys saw a video, but they're doing something really, really, really sweet, okay? Durio Plus is a organization that is... Uh, they're actually the people who created Umar and Hana. So if you know Umar and Hana on YouTube, they're the people who created Umar and Hana. And on Durio Plus, they have, can we throw up that um, image? If you go to durioplus.com slash Kids, they have animated content and it's a safe platform for Muslim kids to watch safe and filtered comment. They actually have their own originals such as Ilm, which is a new Muslim sci-fi series, Little Amar, which is songs and dhikr for young kids, Mina Mila, which is filled with Islamic daily live messages and many more. It's a safe viewing platform. They're brothers from Malaysia who've created it. And I've gotten to know them over the last two years. And it really is a good effort. They're allowing Noor Kids fans to join at like a big discount. Normally it's like 10 bucks a month, but we're able to join at five bucks a month. The website is durioplus.com slash Kids. It's worth checking out. They're supporting us this Ramadan, so you should take a look at their work as well. The second thing, and this is kind of cool, Durio Plus has something called the Creators Challenge, all right? So the Creators Challenge is this. They um, are going to actually be giving a $10 donation, okay? A $10 donation for each person who participates and in addition, they're giving about $360 worth of prizes, all right? So what they want you to do is the following. They want you to go to durioplus.com slash Ramadan Rewards, durioplus.com slash Ramadan Rewards. And when you do that, you're able to create a video about some of the good deeds you're doing during the month of Ramadan, just like you do on Flip, but these ones are three minutes long. Assuming you do it, it's a three-minute video that talks about the good deeds you're doing during the month of Ramadan. They will donate $10 to Islamic Relief USA to go, to go towards relief efforts. And they're going to be picking winners. The number one winner will get $200. Second winner will get $90. Third winner will get $30. So look, it's kind of like a really great opportunity to create some content and do some good through these um, partners at Durio Plus. The website is durioplus.com slash Ramadan Rewards. Uh, before we're going to do Dua to end our program, I just want to take a look at our calendar for this week because we've got an amazing week that is coming. So um, 
this week is the second week of Ramadan, which is the, uh, where we are going to be talking about the Qur'an. Tomorrow, we are going to be joined by Raif, who runs a YouTube channel called Mini Muslims. We're going to learn about how he created this, how he does animated video, and we're going to be playing some uh, nasheeds. On Tuesday, we have Amal Kasir who's joining us. She's a poet who's a part of TED. Uh, TED is really, really special, and she is unbelievable. You don't want to miss her. On Wednesday, we're going to be going in the kitchen again with Rehana's Cuisines. On Thursday, we have a Quran recitation competition, which there'll be uh, things on Flip, which you'll want to take a look at. On Friday, we've got our game show night. Uh, Saturday, uh, show and tell. And then on Sunday, Muslim Makers. So we've got a really great week in front of us. Before we end, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we will put our hands together and we will perform dua. Remember, these minutes are better than any other minutes. These hours are better than any other hours. These days are better than any other days. So we raise our hands and we call on our Lord. Just like Sheikh Omar said, some of the best du'as that we do are the ones that just come from our heart. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, Ya Allah. Today we learned about patience. Ya Allah, You are a subur, the one who is the most patient. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. We ask you to help us build patience in our life. Allow us to have a greater level of patience. When we go through times of difficulty, let us, Ya Allah, instead of complaining, say thank you. Instead of saying, Ya Allah, why did this happen to me? We should instead, Ya Allah, say, Ya Allah, you are the best of planners. Whatever you do is for the best. And we say, thank you, Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Today we talked and we thought about our brothers and sisters in Gaza. The boys and girls and moms and dads who are hungry and who are thirsty. Oh, ya Allah, when they need to go to the doctor, there is hardly any medical facilities or hospitals. Ya Allah, when they go to sleep at night, there's hardly any electricity. Ya Allah, there's boys and girls that have been separated from their parents. There's moms and dads who have lost their babies. Ya Allah, we ask you to help them. Ya Allah, we ask you to allow us to help them. Allow us to be vessels through which you work. Allow our arms to be the arms that you work with. Allow our lips to be the lips that you speak with. Allow our eyes to be the eyes that you see with. Ya Allah, allow us to help make the world a better place. Allow us to help the people in Palestine, Ya Allah. Give them safety, give them success, give them victory. And do it quickly, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to send your blessings on to our Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be on him, upon his family and his companions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, inshallah, we will see you tomorrow, same place, same time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.